Hello, Chris here, and this is my first video for YouTube. I had this little idea in my head for a while about wanting to make this uh, this symbol out of bits, and I figured why not try and record it as well, uh, see how it all turns out, see if I can make a video out of it. So the first thing I did is picked up uh, one of these frames. This is just from the range in the UK, only cost around about three pounds, something along those lines. It's got just a small recess in between the the, the the glass and the back card, around about maybe three quarters of an inch, something like that. Gives just enough space for laying out some bits and just a bit of room in between. So the next part was to prepare the back card itself. I jumped onto the computer, printed out the ultramarine symbol, uh, got it completely the wrong size first time, and then tried again. Yes, my printer is awful, but uh, it does what it needs to do for this simple task. Just needed an outline of the symbol itself. So the first attempt was to put a biro on there and see if I can just put an indentation on the card, but it wasn't enough. So I dug out the craft knife and just started to cut round the symbol itself. Uh, all I was looking to do is just to leave just a small indentation so that I could actually see what was going on. So after I'd finished cutting, you'll see in a moment when I hold it up to the light, you've got just a, a small outline around the actual card itself, just enough of a guide for what we're going to need when we come to the next steps. So now we're going to start chopping bits off sprues. Now, mostly this is old stuff. This is leftovers from kits that I've already built, models that I've already painted. There is probably around about half a box of Tactical Squad Marines. Initially, I wasn't going to use the full kit itself, but as I get further down the line, I realized that I need more pieces and yeah, it all gets used. So I'm not really being precious about the way I'm clipping things out here. I'm certainly not going to be removing mold lines or drilling barrels or anything silly like that. This was just an idea I wanted to get down um, and just see if it worked really, see how it looked. So when I've got all my bits, it's a case of getting the card and starting to lay things down. I've got really two sections in my mind of how it's going to be laid out. I've got the blue background and I've got the U itself, which is going to be, you know, the white. It's the symbol, the ultramarine symbol. I was always going to separate it by, by weapons and armor pieces itself. It just kind of made sense that the armor pieces would be blue. So they became the background and the weapons, they became the, the U shape, the white part. So I'm grabbing bits and I'm just laying everything out. I liked this idea of it being symmetrical either side. Uh, made things a tiny bit more hard work, but it was fine because I had, you know, more or less even pieces for left and right as you would uh, in these sorts of kits. So now we are digging back into those tactical squad marines. I wasn't going to use but here we are still quite a few spaces left a few gaps to fill and there's some nice bigger pieces left on those sprues things like the backpacks the banner there some shoulder guards plenty to go at so next step is to just start gluing everything down straightforward super glue nothing fancy a lot of the things like the, the, the helmets, legs and so on, I've chopped off some of the back just so that it lays flat on the card itself. Um, fairly straightforward to be honest, a good sharp pair of clippers and it's easy just to trim the backs off. Doing this again, maybe I'd use something like a, a plastic card so that I could use Tamiya extra thin cement. It might just look a bit tidier, it might have been a bit easier to do but I still think the effect looks really good as it stands.
So then I took it over to the spray booth, quick coat of black undercoat. And yeah, it's starting to take some shape. Slightly awkward underneath some of the pieces. It didn't cover all that well, so I just had to get in with a brush just to finish that off. So now we're throwing some paint down. So my idea here was to use a similar sort of recipe uh, to what I would use if I was just going to try and paint these as they were a model. Now, again, like I said before, this is just an idea that's in my head. I'm not going to the lengths of painting everything uh, in any massive detail. Initially, I'm just trying to get some paint on some of the uh, pieces themselves just to see how it's going to start to look. So at this point, I wasn't sure if I was just going to paint the, the, the bits themselves or whether I wanted to do the background as well. I had done a couple of mock-ups on the computer just to try and see, but it didn't really give me a proper feel for how it was going to actually look. Or at least I didn't like the way it looked on there. I wasn't sure. So I put down the base coats for the blue, McCrag blue, for the white, some of this lovely... Corax white paste that I've got here and it was just a case of laying down two three coats on the actual bits themselves just to see how it all looked so by now we've got a couple of good coats on both the white and the blue pieces it's starting to really stand out the shapes there you can see what's going on but I wanted just a bit more detail on the actual pieces themselves. We're going to use some just simple techniques here, something that just helps add a bit of depth to the pieces themselves. So we've got some contrast paint, we've got apothecary white, first of all for all of these white pieces. Uh, again, not being precious, getting that on there, getting it all into the recesses, giving it a chance to dry off. Same with all the blue pieces, so we're covering up the uh, McCrag blue. We're going to go over it with some Basilicanum grey contrast paint. I've watered it down a little bit but it's still there just to get that darker colour into the recesses. Similar to you know how I would if I was painting a model. So that's had a bit of time to dry now and I'm going to go in and do a dry brush over all of those contrast paints. So for the white pieces, I've already done quite a heavy dry brush of Corax white. Uh, again, just to, I'm just trying to cover those flat pieces where the contrast paint has stained it a little bit. And then it's just some uh, Vallejo uh, model color white for a, a much lighter dry brush on the top, just to, just to give it a, an additional highlight. And then we're gonna do the same for the blue. So picked up the McCrag blue again and it's quite a heavy dry brush I'm just trying to take away that staining that the contrast paint leaves behind so this next round of highlighting is with Calgoy blue this is what I'd be using if I was highlighting a regular model I just want to bring that blue up it's still a little bit dark and with the black background it's not quite popping as well as I'd like it to so this is somewhere in between it's not quite a heavy dry brush but it's not really a light dry brush either I'm just trying to get that color on there just to brighten things up a little bit and now we're gonna go in with uh, a final highlight much lighter this time it, this is just to sort of pick out the edges a little bit I'm using Venrisian gray Again, it's a colour I'd use as, as, as like a really high highlight uh, if I was painting an ultramarine. And yeah, so this is the final product. So from a, a little idea I, I couldn't quite uh, get out of my head when I was trying to sleep a couple of nights ago, I really like how it's come out. I, I wanted to do this one fairly quickly it was more like a proof of concept type thing get it onto the table see how it looked see if I could film it see if I could edit and put a video together so this is what we've got I hope you've liked it I really hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed trying to make all this if you have 
drop a comment below, let me know, hit the like button and hit subscribe if you want to see any more. Hopefully I can try something like this again. If you've got any ideas, again, drop a comment, let me know what you'd like to see. Thank you very much for watching.